Alrighty, so who can tell me what this is? Wood. Wood. Wrong. Two by four. This is the beginning of a table, or the funniest comedic tool the Three Stooges ever used. Who drinks wine? Good, because none of you. Oh, it's Shay! <laughs> now, whose parents drink wine? And you know how they always have the corks afterwards? No. Don't you ever wish you could do something with them? You can. You can make tables, right? There is a table called a cork top table. It is usually used as a coffee table. Be warned, though, that this table takes a very long time to make because a small table, about three feet wide as a square, can take up to 250 corks at the least. There are four main parts to making a table. One, the top. Two, the legs. Three, assembling it. And four, gathering all your materials and finishing it off. <coughs> so the fourth step is actually the first step. You must plan out what kind of table do you want. Do you want your corks to be flat? Do you want them to stand up? Do you want it to be deep? Do you want it to be a coffee table? Is it supposed to be circular, triangular, hexagonal? You must decide all of this before you start, and you must be absolutely sure you want the table to be exactly like that. Because if you're not, then you have to start all over again. First step, get a piece of plywood. About six by four feet usually for any table will be sufficient, because it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. It's going to be completely hidden away. Two, cut it into the shape you want. The, I suggest a square to start out. They're the easiest shape. The circle is the hardest shape to cut, but on the other hand, it's the easiest to fill up. The triangle is actually a rather good shape, but again, hard to cut. <clears throat> now, the second step for making the top of the table is to take a piece of wood, similar to this, usually a bit uh, shallower, about yay long, and cut off strips, each one as long as, of your, of your, as your side. If you're making a circular table, you have to bend the wood, which is a special process. After you, <clears throat> after you cut apart each sl slice of wood, you have to drill diagonally up from the table into the wood and attach a screw. If you do not drill a hole, your wood will split and will have to start over from the beginning. I don't t can't tell you how many times that has happened to me. You think, oh, well, I'll just put it in. No. No. Step two, <laughs> table legs. There are three ways to make table legs. You can strip legs from another table, which is the easiest, but it doesn't always look right. If you're going to do so, I suggest you find a set of wrought iron legs, as they usually look the best and can bend a little, but while maintaining their stability. Or you can go out and make legs. If you're doing this, I suggest you go find dry, fallen wood in the right shape. Make sure that it's not moldy and that it has no cracks in it. Step three, you can buy table legs. But table legs look ugly. They just do. <clears throat> Step three, uh, if you're going to, you need to assemble your materials. Put it into the correct shape. Remember, always drill your hole and make sure that you have enough of the supplies for, for, to do it in one go. If not, you'll be running to the store. Oh wait, I forgot this this time. Oh wait, no wait, I need this. Ah! <laughs> the final step is to gather your corks. I suggest you go to bars. To be honest, they always keep hold of their corks and they'll usually give them to you. Sometimes they don't. There are a few charities that collect corks, but it's not very common. Thank you. <laughs>